everyone. Um, before we start the class, uh, I will just take your attendance. So uh, if you are here, just uh, let me know. Okay, All right, uh, Brenda. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, Chan Su Pian. All right, uh, Che Tai Siu. Okay, Chu Zhang Hing. Chu Zhang Hing. Chu Zhang Hing. Uh, Chao Yu Yang. All right, Ernest. Uh, Go Kian Sing. Go Kian Sing. All right, Hu Hing Dong. Hu Hing Dong. Ku Bun Kiong. Ku Bun Kiong. Okay, Lao Lok Jing. Good afternoon, Lisa Lim. Okay, uh, Lim Chun Wei. Lim Chun Wei, all right. Uh, Lim Wen Yang. Lim Wen Yang. Uh, Lim Yong Chuan. Long Yao Ting. Long Yao Ting. Good afternoon. Uh, Lo Tiong Lia. All right, good afternoon. Uh, Lu Chui Min. Okay. Uh, Ng Han Xiang, Ng Han Xiang, right? Ng Wei Hong. Okay, good afternoon. Ng Mei Lin. Okay, Pong Sui Wen. Right? Kua Yi Hang. Kua Yi Hang. Okay, So Yan Chang. All right, good afternoon. Tan Xin Shen. Tan Xin Shen. Okay, Tio Leong Ho. Tio Leong Ho. Uh, Tio Yi Si. Okay, Wong Chong Yi. Good afternoon. Wong Ka Xing. Right, uh, Yong Wing Liang. <coughs> and Yong Chi Ye. Yong Chi Ye. All right, uh, okay. Uh, sir, I'm. Um, uh, Wen Yang is here. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll run through the list again. Uh, wait, let me just stop. Uh, Chu Zhang Hing. Chu Zhang Hing, are you here? Chu Zhang Hing. Okay. Uh, Zhang Hing, did you submit your quiz? Have you uh, submitted your quiz? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. If uh, midnight, I uh, realized I forgot to submit it. Oh, so you just submitted okay. it? Okay, good. Uh, uh, yeah, I will I'll submit later. Oh, you submit? You haven't submitted it? Uh? Ah. Uh, can you submit now? Okay, yeah, okay. All right, okay. Lin Wen Yang. And Tio Leong Ho. Tio Leong Ho, are you here? Oh, Leong Ho. Okay, All right. So for today's class, um, now what we do during our uh, one hour lecture is uh, we will discuss the materials that you have uh, watched in your lecture videos. Because in the lecture video, there are a lot of stuff there. So I will have a quick run through of the materials in the lecture video. And you can ask me uh, to clarify on anything that you want further explanation on. Okay, so when you watch lecture videos, any part that you feel like you want more uh, explanation, you just note it down and we discuss during our one hour lecture class. And also during our one hour lecture class, we will discuss the quiz answers. Okay, so let's start with uh, the first uh, topic. Why do we want to use microcontrollers? Okay, now microcontrollers, um, we place them into products uh, so that we can control the products function automatically. So let's say you have a product. Now, the, if you want the product to work by itself, to run by itself uh, without having a human there, what we can do is we can use either a mechanical control, electronic control, or uh, electrical control. There are three different ways. If you use mechanical control, then you have to build some, uh, some gearing mechanism, you know, some... Uh, complex gearing mechanism so that uh, uh, if the the product first of all do something and then after maybe one minute uh, using a mechanical timer gearing system uh, springs and gears then it move on to do a second uh, second task and then it move on to do a third thing so mechanical means to control a product uh, is very complex it makes the product very big very expensive use a lot of power so not so practical right no, uh, but that's what you see in all those, uh, you know, if you are those science fiction fans, uh, you know, they have this, uh, no, sorry, steampunk, all right, steampunk, uh, using uh, steam engines. They, uh, they automate a lot of contraptions, okay, in those uh, science fiction, okay, but uh, it's 
really not power efficient and it's very big. Now, the, the other two ways uh, where you can automate a product, make the product work by itself is you can use electrical or electronic means. Now, electrical means, electrical uh, is you use uh, relays. You can use relays uh, and timers. Okay, so a timer is this device where you set the time, uh, maybe five minutes. So after five minutes, then a, a switch will turn on or turn off. Okay, or you can you can you can uh, program, you can create a programmer to control the product uh, by using uh, transistors and op amps. Right, this is the uh, non-programmable. So you combine a lot of op amps and transistors together. Uh, so that uh, the system will do something automatically. But we call this a hard wiring because every time you want to change the function of the product, you have to rewire everything. So also not good, which is why electronics revolutionized the industry because electronics is programmable. It's programmable because you don't use a circuit to perform the function. You write a program and a processor will uh, run the program. What we mean by the processor run the program is your program consists of a list of instructions. The processor will just uh, do what is instructed by each instruction one by one. Okay, You will have seen this uh, in your subject microprocessors, in your subject microprocessors where you use the PIC microcontroller. You, you tell the processor what to do by writing a sequence of assembly instructions. So those assembly instructions uh, together, they form a program which controls your product. So we use an example of an electric hot plate. Now this electric hot plate, um, the mechanical means will be using a thermistor. Thermistors uh, are very durable, very reliable, but not so smart. In fact, uh, if you go to the supermarket now, you go and buy an electric hot plate, okay? Or you buy a toaster oven, toaster oven. You know those small, small ovens, uh, small ovens that you use to toast your bread, okay? The, in, in fact, uh, they are still making all these toaster ovens and electric hot plates uh, using a uh, thermistor, thermistor. A thermistor is a, is a mechanical device, uh, not sorry, not thermistor. Thermostat. Thermostat. There is a resistor that is sensitive to temperature, not thermistor. Thermostat. A thermostat is a switch that will open and close uh, based on temperature. Okay. So the electric hot plate and the toaster oven, how it works is you set you set the temperature to let's say 180 degrees. 180 degrees. So when the thermostat detects that the temperature has reached 180 degrees it will open circuit. So the heating element or the hot plate will then stop heating up. It start to cool down. When it goes below, so it will continue above 180 for a little bit more. And then it will start to cool down. Once it goes below 180, the thermostat will close back the switch and then the heating element will start to heat up again. So basically, uh, you're going to have a temperature control system uh, that fluctuates around 180 degrees is uh, is really uh, not nice uh, because let's say if I draw a straight line, uh, let's say if this straight line is 180 degrees, uh, 180 degrees, uh, then your temperature is going to be like this. It'll go above 180, go below 180, go above 180, go below 180. So it'll be fluctuating like this. Not nice, not accurate. Not good if you, if you are those chefs uh, that want to cook at certain temperatures. You need to finally control your temperature, not good. But for simple purposes like this, it works. Huh? So if you want to improve the product, then we put a mouse controller inside. Why we put a mouse controller inside? Because the mouse controller will automatically uh, control the temperature of the hot plate by measuring the temperature using temperature sensors and then turning on and turning off the hot plate very rapidly using a uh, pulse width modulation, PWM, okay? So the higher is the PWM frequency, uh, the more finely you can control the temperature. 
Okay, and the thermostat detects changes in temperature very, very slowly because uh, the thermostat uh, is not measuring the temperature of the hot plate. Uh. The thermostat is actually measuring the temperature inside the this uh, underneath the electric hot plate. So the, the hot plate will have to heat up the air, heat up the air inside this device. And then the thermistor will detect the changes of temperature in the air. So uh, that means uh, the hot plate will actually become much hotter than what the thermostat detects. Not good. Uh, right? And it's very slow. But if you use temperature sensors, the temperature sensors, uh, you see thermostat is very big, but temperature sensors are very small. And the temperature sensors can be directly attached to the bottom of the hot plate. And you can attach a lot of temperature sensors. So you get a very uh, distributed, you get a nice average reading of the entire hot plate. And the, the temperature sensors, for example, thermocouples, uh, because they are touching the bottom of the hot plate, they can detect changes in temperature very fast. Right? So in other words, uh, the mouse controller can detect changes very fast. And then immediately it can turn on or turn off the heating element. Okay, so that the temperature very, very closely uh, tracks the user's uh, set temperature. That is the main function. That's the main function. But and on top of that, uh, because the mouse control is programmable, you can add so many other things. For example, automatically turning it off, automatically turning it off. Uh, and then you can also add temperature calibration. Now, temperature calibration means uh, if you look at, you go to your kitchen now, you look at your toaster oven, uh, toaster oven. The typically uh, the standard toaster ovens, uh, you will just right here, uh, or you look at your steam boot, you know, the hot plate, the induction cooker you use for making steam boot. Nowadays, everyone eat at home. Uh, I'm sure you, you have bought one of these. Uh, right? Here, uh, you'll be writing here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There is no actual temperature written here. It's just numbers. So they are not calibrated. Calibrated means you, you see the actual temperature here. So if I turn the knob to 100, uh, the hot plate will really heat up to 100 degrees. Not more, not less. Accurate, right? Because it's calibrated. And we can do this if we have calibrated temperature sensors, uh, not using thermostat. Uh. Okay. And we can also uh, have indicators. If the temperature has reached the value already, then the indicator can flash to tell you. And we can also have uh, displays. Now, anything that has an LCD display uh, definitely will have a microcontroller inside. Because uh, in order to send information to display on this LCD display, you need a microcontroller or any processor-based system to send the data. Okay, So the, the display will show you what is your desired temperature, for example, 250 and the actual temperature currently, which is, for example, 60. Okay, so uh, we have this system, this electric hot plate. Now, if you are to design this electric hot plate, let's say for your mini project, you want to build an uh, electric hot plate. Uh, so these products, uh, they are made by many engineers. You have the materials engineer to select the material used for the body. Okay? You have the mechanical engineer to design the chassis. Right. So it's not our job uh, to choose the material or design the chassis. The e and &E engineer's job uh, is to design the electrical system. Uh, what is the electrical system? So the electrical system of the electric hot plate uh, that we are supposed to design, uh, here is the block diagram. Right, here's the block diagram. So when we design uh, electrical electronic systems, the first thing we do uh, is we draw the uh, block diagram. We want to know what are the main parts of the system and what each of these parts do. After we have drawn the block diagram, when we go into designing in detail, then we will design the circuit inside each block. Okay, And then when we test, we test each block separately before combining, integrating the blocks. So here, this is your microcontroller. This is the hub of your uh, uh, hot plate, okay? your electrical hot plate. This is the mouse controller. Now, the mouse controller will need some input from the user, and you need to display something to the user. We say user interface. So this is your user interface. You got a control knob to, to uh, for the user to set the temperature, 
and you have a display to show the user what is the temperature set and what is the current temperature. Okay, so uh, if the control knob, the control knob uh, in the simplest form uh, is just a potential meter, right? A control knob, uh, you turn the knob, uh, in the simplest form, you can implement it as a potential meter. So when you turn the potential meter, the volt, it will output a changing voltage, which you will need to use ADC, ADC of the mouse controller to detect. Okay, now you, you can also use the ADC to detect changes in temperature. If you are using, uh, let's say, thermal couple, okay, if you are using a thermal couple, is thermal couples are, are very small, very cheap, and they can detect changes in temperature very fast. That means that when the temperature changes, uh, the output value will also change very fast. And the output is an analog voltage, so you need an ADC as well. Okay, so these are the inputs. And then the mount controller needs to control the heating element. Now the mount controller cannot provide enough current to power the heating element. So you need a driver circuit. The driver circuit uh, is probably a power transistor. Okay, Power transistor. What you have studied in power electronics, uh, you got transistors uh, specially designed to handle large amounts of current. Okay? We don't use relay. Relay is for slow switching because here, uh, if I want to switch on and off the heating element very fast, uh, you know, your power electronic switches, you chop, chop, you do chopping, buck boost converters, uh, you have chopping. Uh, so the switching frequency is very high. We can't use relays for that. Relays are mechanical. Relays are uh, when you turn on and turn off, you hear the tuck, 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 tuck sound. Uh, imagine that you can't really go very fast. Probably maximum is up to 100 hertz. Okay. Uh, it, it, then you will start to stick, the switch will start to stick already. Oh, that's the sound you hear like, when you use thermostat. Like, you know? When you know when you use uh, your electric hot plate like, or your toaster oven, uh, when it gets very hot, then you hear a tuck sound, right? That's actually the sound of the thermostat opening or closing circuit. Okay? So when the oven starts to cool down, then you hear another tuck sound, the thermostat closes back the circuit and it starts to heat up again. Okay? So the thermostat is just opening and closing circuit whenever the temperature hits a certain value. Okay, so here uh, uh, we have a power, this driver is just a power transistor circuit, which receives a PWM signal from our control. So our control will need a PWM module, or you can just uh, manually generate PWM signal. High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. You have to manually set the pin high, set the pin low, set the pin high, set the pin low to generate the PWM. Or you can just use a PWM module. We should send a signal to the driver. The driver will then uh, switch on and off uh, according to the signal and send current to the heating element. Now, you might need the indicator lamp as well. So that's also dri uh, driven by this uh, current driver circuit. And finally, we need power management. Power management uh, is to regulate the power and also uh, convert because means power is AC. So we will need a rectifier circuit here to convert the AC to DC. And then uh, we need a voltage regulator to regulate the DC. And we also need a buck converter to reduce the voltage to 5 volts for my controller, for example, uh, 24 volts for this driver. So inside power management circuit, uh, you have rectifiers, boost converters, and regulators. Uh, okay? And this is your whole electrical system. So the e, e engineer will build this, right? It will build this. And so this whole circuit uh, will consist of some circuit boards and a lot of sensors and a lot of wires. Uh, and this whole thing will be attached onto, attached onto the product, the chassis uh, built by the mechanical engineer. Okay, so uh, now what does the microcontroller actually do? We can categorize uh, the job of the microcontroller generally in four different, four different classes. The mouse control generally do four different types of things. The first one, the most common uh, is closed loop control. This diagram is very familiar to you. This is the basic diagram of a control system. Okay, so if you, if you build a closed loop control system, uh, the controller uh, is your microcontroller, right? What you study in control engineering, uh, 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 you have a controller here which implements your transfer functions, right? So you simulate this in MATLAB. 
you simulate this in uh, MATLAB Simulink, but you don't. That that is lab work in the lab. Now, if you build actually build products uh, using closed loop control, then what is the controller? The controller is a microcontroller, right? So in this example here, let's say you have your electric hot plate, uh, the the mouse controller will then send the signals to the heating element, and the heating element will then uh, start to heat up. So the output is the temperature of the temperature of the hot plate, right? The actual heat temperature of the hot plate, which we will need to measure using the temperature sensor and then compare with your the user's desired temperature. So let's say user wants 180. The measure is 160. Not yet there, error of 20. So the controller will continue sending signal to heat up, right? And you will get, uh, you the output uh, will track. So this output will track the user's input very nicely, control system. Close loop. Okay, close loop. And how do we implement this? Uh, in a in a typical uh, controller, closed loop controller, you have what we call the PID controller, proportional, integral, and differential. Right, proportional, integral, and differential. So these three uh, these three components uh, of your controller, they are just mathematical equations. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is just KP is just a coefficient. How you get these coefficient values? Uh, you have to do experiment. Uh, so you have to build the whole circuit, and then you have to uh, test it. Okay, so you put in a temperature, and then uh, you 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 check you check. Uh, if I put in certain values, let's say that like, I just put in some arbitrary uh, KP, KI, and KD values, uh, then I see uh, how well the output tracks the input. Okay, if then I, I start to tune the KP, KI, and KD values. Uh, I start to tune them. Tune them means you just change them. Uh, you change them and you observe what happens at the output. Does the output become better or worse? Better means more closely track the input. Worse means uh, it starts to go all over the place. So if worse means, oh, that's the wrong direction, then I should change my value in the other direction. For example, if I increase the value, output starts to get very bad. Then I don't increase or I decrease the value and I look at the output and then I keep changing the values until the output is optimum. Uh, then I stop. So the KP, KI, KD values are you have to determine by trial and error, field, field, field testing by experiment. Okay. And in order to do that, you have to build the whole system. So these are just mathematics equations. Uh, and we don't write our program in assembly anymore. Uh. To do mathematic equations, uh, we just write our program in C, C programming, C++ programming. You know, C++ programming, you can very easily write quadratic cubic functions, right? And then the, the compiler will very intelligently convert all your C, C++ or C language statements uh, into assembly. You don't need to know how, uh, the compiler will do it for you, right? Okay, so in order to perform closed loop control, you need to have a microcontroller that can support multiplication and division. That's, these are not simple operations. You see your cheap PIC microcontroller can only do uh, add and subtract. If you want to do multiply and divide operations, you have to manually write a subroutine, a function to, to do uh, multiply divide by using a lot of add, subtract, and uh, rotates, shifting, left shift, right shift. You have to do a lot of that in a lot of loops to do multiply and divide, okay? For more advanced microcontrollers, 32-bit microcontrollers like the ARM Cortex-M microcontroller, it has a built-in uh, multiplier and divider hardware. Basically, uh, it's a digital circuit that performs multiplication operation and a digital circuit that performs division operation. So then it's very fast. You don't have to write software for it. One single multiply instruction, one single divide instruction, and it's done. Okay, so uh, there are some requirements there. I'm going to do closed loop control, right? Uh, the next one, besides closed loop control, uh, the next one, uh, this is the simplest one. The simplest one is uh, sequencing. Sequencing means your microcontroller controls the output of the product through a sequence of steps. For example, a uh, washing machine, washing machine. When you set the washing cycle, uh, after you set the washing cycle, you start the washing machine. Then the washing machine, uh, 
will go through a sequence of operations. First, it will turn op it will turn on the wow, and then water will come in. Water will fill up until a certain certain level detected by a water level sensor. Uh, then the water will stop. The water valve will stop, and then the heating element inside will start to heat up the water. And then once the water has reached a certain temperature detected by a temperature sensor, the another valve will uh, let in some det detergent, maybe, and then a motor will start to spin the washing machine and so on. So you see, uh, there are a sequence of steps. And this is the easiest. This is the simplest requirement. A uh, PIC mount controller is sufficient uh, to do sequencing, uh, normal sequencing control like this. Okay. So uh, besides sequencing, you have signal conditioning and processing, uh, DSP. Uh, a common application of DSP is filtering, removing high frequency components, right? You remove the high frequency components then you get this signal or removing low frequency components or passing frequency within a certain uh, bandwidth, okay? You, call, you say those are DSP operations, right? So uh, if you want to perform DSP functions, uh, what, when do we need DSP? Uh, when you are dealing with products uh, that, uh, that deals with images audio and video audio and video for example uh, night vision goggles okay if you are working in the company uh, that's developing night vision goggles uh, so you have uh, infrared uh, sensors and receivers the yeah, ir sensor reverse very expensive ones so this uh, this um, sensors uh, now is is not one sensor uh, is not one sensor is uh, let's say for example your infrared Infrared resolution is 480 by 320, for example. 480 by 320. The infrared uh, screen, uh, 480 by 320. Then you will need 480 by 320 uh, IR sensors. So it will capture the, the IR signal, 480 by 320 pixels. Uh, and then you will need to display this on a screen. Okay, And you don't display the raw information. You will need to maybe... Uh, do some corrections on the data. And the key point is this. The information is coming in very fast. You need to process the information as it is coming in and immediately display it on the screen. Very fast. We say real time, real time. Okay. Or uh, for example, or those voice changing instrument. You know, voice changing instrument, you speak into a microphone and then immediately the speaker or producer a different voice, change your voice. So actually the, the voice changing is running in real time very fast. And in order for it to happen, uh, changing the frequency components, for example, uh, you need special hardware. We call that a digital signal processor. DSP is digital signal processing or some people call it a digital signal processor. So uh, certain microcontrollers, right? They have a special hardware inside called a digital signal processor to support this type of operations. Okay. Uh, if you remember your digital signal processing, uh, if you remember uh, your subject uh, or digital signal processing, or you call it discrete time signal processing, uh, discrete time signal processing, when you do filtering, what you're actually doing is MAC, right? Multiply, multiply, and accumulate. When you do filtering, you're actually doing a lot of multiplications and uh, accumulation and adding them, okay? So normal processor, they have to multiply and accumulate one by one, very slow. So processors that support DSP operation, they have a built-in special hardware to support this type of operation, this type of DSP operation. Uh, another name we call that hardware is uh, FPU. We call it a floating point unit. FPU. Floating points uh, are very, floating point operations are very complex stuff. Okay, floating point operations. You take two floating point numbers, or decimal point one, uh, you multiply them together, uh, it's very complex. It takes normal microcontrollers uh, a lot of processing time. But if you have a special hardware inside called a FPU floating point unit, uh, then the processor can offload all the uh, floating point operations to this guy. We call this guy a co-processor, co-processor. So he helps the main processor, he's beside the main processor to do all this. 
So mild controllers that do signal processing and conditioning, uh, you should get a mild controller with uh, built-in digital signal processing hardware or a floating point unit. Right? And lastly, the fourth type of use for microcontrollers uh, is uh, communication. Communication. So the most common form of communication and networking for microcontrollers is the simplest one is a serial port. Uh, the zero, they are all zero ports. Uh. The simplest one uh, is UART. UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, uh, UART, uh, is uh, one to one. That means one microcontroller talk with another microcontroller. One to one is UART. If uh, one to many is SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface, one microcontroller to many sensors or actuators. If you want many to many, that means many microcontrollers to many sensors actuators, then you use uh, I square C, inter integrated circuit, or CAN, controller area network. So these are the standard uh, serial ports that microcontrollers have for communication and networking. Now, there are some higher end ones. The higher end ones uh, are USB and uh, Ethernet. Okay? Now, USB and Ethernet is not so common because uh, USB is uh, the communication protocol, uh, the, the handshaking, uh, the transfer of data involved uh, uh, has a lot of steps. And because of that, uh, the library to handle USB communication, the functions to handle USB communication, uh, the code is very big. You need a lot of memory. That's number one. Number two uh, is USB is at very high speed. So the mouse controller not only need to have a lot of memory, uh, it also need to run at very high speed in order to support a uh, USB peripheral, USB ports. Same with Ethernet ports. Uh. Okay. But uh, some microcontrollers support this. Why, why do you need this type of controllers? Uh? Is you, you want to build a product that can connect to your computer. Okay. You want to build some plug and play device. Uh, that you can connect to your computer immediately can detect because computers uh, the standard port is USB uh, or Ethernet. Okay, so uh, these are the the peripherals uh, that mouse controllers should have if they are performing this function of communication and networking. Okay, now uh, what is the difference? What is the difference between microcontrollers and computer programs? The difference between microcontrollers and computer programs. We have six differences. First one is uh, interface. Interface. Computers uh, interface normally uh, is keyboard, mouse, uh, monitor. Keyboard, mouse, monitor. Standard. Uh. Microcontrollers do not have such stuff. Microcontrollers, the interface uh, is customized for different applications. So for every single application, uh, you will have a special set of uh, interface according to that, optimize for the application. So uh, for example, your electric hot plate, uh, the input devices is uh, uh, the temperature, turn the temperature knob, right? You turn the temperature knob to control the temperature is the input and the output is a lamp, just one single LED to show you that the device is working, right? That's all. No keyboard, no mouse, no uh, monitor, right? So that's the first difference between uh, microcontrollers and uh, computer systems. Uh, okay. The second one uh, is concurrency. Concurrency uh, refers to doing many things at the same time. Okay. Computers can do many things at the same time. Like for example, now you see I'm running a lot of different programs at the same time. Okay. Microcontrollers can also do many things at the same time. It can control a motor sensor and uh, display on the LCD screen, can do many things at the same time. But the main difference is uh, the keyword uh, is uh, real time, real time. Why do we care about real time? It is because uh, computer systems are, are isolated, right? Whatever you do in a computer, uh, if your program crash, uh, nothing will happen. Uh, maybe you lose some data on the computer, then you just restart the computer, nothing will happen. But when we talk about embedded systems, uh, the microcontroller is controlling some physical process, some motors, some heating elements. Okay, So whatever happens in your program uh, will affect something in the real world. 
Now that is dangerous. Okay. For example, uh, you talk about the uh, your car something uh, crit safety critical. Uh, for example, your car. In your car, there are a lot of safety critical systems. Number one is your uh, traction control. If you buy a car nowadays, your car got TCS traction control. Then you got ABS anti brake locking system, and then you got your A bags. When your car uh, knocks into something, uh, the A bag will deploy. Okay, so real time is very important because uh, what real time means is uh, uh, provide response within provide response within a deadline. The system needs to be able to provide a response within a deadline. It doesn't need to be very fast, but just within a deadline. And this is uh, guaranteed. Guaranteed. For example, uh, if my, if my I have a, in the car, the airbag system, you have an accelerometer. When the accelerometer detects the car moving from high speed, suddenly become very low speed. That means there is collision. And how do we detect collision? We use accelerometer. When there is change in acceleration from from uh, sudden change in acceleration means the car suddenly is down. Uh, if this exceeds a certain threshold, uh, then it will trigger a, a actuator, a motor, to release the airbag. Okay? And this, let's say, uh, guaranteed to happen within 10 milliseconds. So it can happen, the air can be released within one millisecond of detecting the slowdown or two milliseconds, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine milliseconds, or 9.99. It's still fine, as long as it doesn't exceed 10 milliseconds, the deadline. Now, this can be guaranteed because in microcontrollers, uh, the program is very simple. Okay, We can guarantee this. But for desktop computers or uh, PC program, we cannot guarantee this. Why? Because of this guy, the OS, your operating system. Okay, your system, your Windows operating system, or your Linux, or your Mac OS, or your Android, or any type of desktop operating system. The operating system uh, is very complex. And the more, the more programs you run uh, at the same time, uh, the whole system will start to slow down. So it can never guarantee that response uh, for anything that you do uh, uh, within a certain deadline cannot be guaranteed because the operating system is just too complex, too many things inside. Okay, So that why we use microcontrollers uh, for safety critical systems, transportation, telecommunications equipment, medical equipment, uh, satellites. You know, you can't afford to have any errors. Uh, for example, in the robot that you send to Mars, if they, you only send one one robot, anything happens to the guy is gone. Everything is over. So, the 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 behavior of the system must be one hundred percent predictable, 100% predictable, or we say deterministic, deterministic, right? So there is, whatever the, the system does, it will be within our prediction. It will never do something that we, we don't expect it to do. Okay, this is what is guaranteed like, concurrency, okay? Which is, uh, so talking about responsiveness also, like, Responsiveness is uh, it should be able to respond within deadline. Okay. Now microcontrollers also have you also need to build in reliability and fault handling. That means uh, when the system detects that it's going to fail, it will uh, run some fail safe code uh, so that the system can shut down safely without damaging anything. Okay. So you have to add in special code for this uh, to handle faults, make the whole system shut down safely. Uh, this doesn't happen with your computer. You, you know, if your computer, something happens, something unexpected happens, like there is a voltage surge or a voltage drop suddenly, uh, your computer will just turn off and you lose all your data. Right? Designed to uh, save all the data or whatever doing before it shuts down, right? No such thing right now. So you don't have fault handling and reliability. Uh, okay? But this is essential uh, in microcontroller systems. Uh, diagnostics are additional things uh, that we build into the system to help us to identify and fix problems very fast. For example, uh, you look at your router modem, right? that's a type of embed system in your house, or you should have a router okay, that help you to connect to the internet. Uh. 
when you turn on the router, you notice that the lights will blink in a certain way, right? The lights uh, are blinking in a certain pattern to tell us what the device is doing. So if something is wrong, for example, uh, the the Ethernet connection is is uh, there's nothing there, the wire broken maybe, or there is no internet, uh, no internet connection. The lights will be blinking in a certain way. So these are called diagnostics. It helps us to immediately, very fast, uh, identify what's the problem. And lastly, uh, constraints. Microcontroller systems have a lot of constraints compared to computers. Uh, you have uh, uh, cost, power, size, weight, energy consumption, temperature that the device is supposed to operate in. So all these constraints uh, is to help us to create an optimum solution. Why we want optimum solution is because we don't want overkill. Computer systems are overkill. We want a product uh, that will perform all of its functions at the lowest possible cost, right? Economic value. Uh. So in industry, when you design something, it's all about uh, economic value, okay? All right, um, now how do we use the microcontroller? How do we use the microcontroller? First, you have to understand the processor. This is the processor, okay? So we will talk about processors in detail uh, on week three. We will talk about processors in detail on week three. So this is a processor. Now inside the processor, you have a lot of uh, blocks. You have a lot of blocks, okay? Um, the CPU core is the main block. The interrupt controller is the main block. The rest are all uh, optional. You have a wake up interrupt controller to wake up the system if it goes to sleep, optional. Memory protection unit is optional. Debugging is optional. Uh, instruction, micro trace buffer to store the history of instruction execution, also optional. Debug access port to allow a debugger to connect to your processor, also optional. Okay. So this processor, this processor, if we zoom out a little bit, the processor is one part of a microcontroller. So here we talk about the Cortex M0. Uh, now there are a few different Cortex M models, uh, M0, M1, M3, M4. We will talk about that in week three of CPU. Uh. So now this is the M0 CPU is inside this KL25Z Freescale microcontroller. Now inside the microcontroller, besides the processor, you have other things like memory, uh, clock control, and peripherals. Okay? So the low speed peripherals connect to the peripheral bus, while the high speed peripherals like memory uh, connect to the high speed bus. And the high speed bus and the low speed bus are connected by a bridge. Right? These are just the terminology. Now, uh, you, a mount controller can work by itself. So you need, if you want to use a mount controller, you should get a development board. So this development board, you have your main microcontroller here. In order to program your main microcontroller, you have a, another microcontroller. So this is the programmer. Uh, nowadays, uh, most of the development boards right, come with a built-in programmer, which uh, you have a USB port to connect to your PC. So in your PC, you install the development tools, which we will talk about next. Uh. So in your PC, you install the development tools. The development tools will directly talk to this microcontroller to download program into this target microcontroller. And you can also do debugging. That means you step through the program line by line as the program is running on the actual microcontroller. We call that debugging. Simulating means uh, you step through your program line by line on a virtual device, virtual mouse controller, not the real thing. Debugging means, debugging means on your host PC, when you debug, you step through your, your program line by line, it's actually running on the actual thing. Okay, and to do this, to do debug, uh, you need this special microcontroller, this middleman. Okay, why? Uh, because computer talk in USB, microcontroller talk in uh, SWD. This is the debugging protocol, SWD, or JTAG. Uh. J debugging protocol, uh, industry standard is JTAG. ARM uses SWD, two protocols. Uh. So this mouse controller is the middleman. You talk JTAG SWD with your mouse controller, and you talk USB with your computer. So you need this guy. And the rest are all peripherals, peripherals. Okay, you need some peripherals, like LEDs, uh, switches, etc. 
Right, so we talk about the development tools now. Uh, you Development tools, there are a lot of development tools. You need project manager to manage all your files. You need device database to, to hold all your libraries. You need a source code editor to write your code. You need compiler, assembler, linker, etc. So last time uh, in the 70s and 80s, uh, you need to run all of these uh, one by one. That means that uh, you have to run the project manager, then you have to run the database, then you have to run the source code editor, and you have to run the compiler one by one. But nowadays, uh, all these tools are packaged together into a single uh, software. You call that an IDE, Integrated, integrated uh, Development Environment. Integrated uh, Development Environment. Like what you use for your... Uh, PIC mouse controller, you use MP Lab, right, for your PIC microcontroller. You use, uh, for PIC, uh, you use MP Lab. So for this uh, ARM Cortex M microcontrollers, we use this uh, KL microcontroller development kit, KL MDK. It's the most widely used uh, for ARM microcontrollers. Uh. So we use this KL. Now inside KL, you have all these, uh, all these tools, and you will be uh, introduced to them uh, in your lab. So I won't talk about them in much detail here. These are all technology. Uh, technology. They will change with every new release of uh, development tools. Okay. So we use them in the lab. Uh. Don't need to talk too much theory about them. Okay. Now, um, the compilation flow is you can write your program in C or assembly. You can write your program in C or assembly. When you build, uh, if you write in C, the compiler will convert your C file into object files. If you write an assembly, the assembler will convert your assembly files into object files. So you get a lot of object files. You, run, you need to run another program. You don't need to run it. When you press the build button, the build will do all of this for you automatically. Compile, assemble, link automatically. The linker will combine all the object files and also library files. If you use any library files, what do we mean by using uh, library files? If you write something like uh, if you write something like hash include hash include stdio.h, okay, you write something like this. Why you write something like this? Because you want to use printf. Uh, you want to use the printf. You want to use the printf function. So the printf function comes from this library. So if you write hash include stdio.h, uh, then the the stdio.h library uh, will be linked to your uh, program by the linker. So the linker will link all the code that you need to, for your program to run correctly, and you combine everything together into a single executable image. Executable image. Now, there are a lot of executable file formats. Uh. Your mouse controller may not support the, the one that, that this KLMDK produce. KLMDK produce .axf. So if your mouse controller don't support it, then you need to convert this executable format now into another executable format supported by a controller. For example, .bin, binary file. All right, .bin. You know, you've got .hex, .bin, uh, .elf, a lot of formats. Uh. Your, your, PIL, your PIC microcontroller uses .hex, uh, .hex uh, but this guy uses .bin. So you have to run some utility. Utility, uh, utility are small programs that support the main function. They are not the main function. Main function is compiler, assembler, linker. These are main functions. So to support the main function, you've got these uh, lesser functions. So lesser functions, we call them utility, utility programs, uh, which, for example, here is uh, convert the executable image from one format to another. Now, after you get your executable file, there are three things you can do. You can simulate it. You can download. You can program it or you can do debugging. Okay. Uh, this is the file structure. This is the file structure. If you, during your lab practical, you will observe this. Lab. During your lab practical, if you create a project, right, this is your main.c. Your C programmer will, write, will be writing mostly in C, lah, a little bit of assembly, mostly in C. Okay. So your program is main.c. Main.c is here. Main.c is here. Now, when you write a, when you create a project, you have to choose a particular microcontroller. So when you choose a particular microcontroller, the development tool will automatically add these files for you. 
the startup file and the system file for the particular device that you chose, right? And also the device header file. So all these files are uh, for that particular device that you choose, uh, right? They will be automatically added in for you. This is from your device database, okay? And then the, this header file will further pull in some other header files. Uh. These are the header files uh, for your processor. In this case is the Cortex M0. You see Cortex M0, Cortex M0, uh, additional header files. Uh. And these are some additional, even more header files. Okay. Uh, this, all, this is the complete list of files. Uh. And uh, so I write here some notes uh, on, on the specific function of each of these files. Right. You can get the details in the video. Uh. Okay. Or when you do the lab, you will see all these files. Okay, uh, lastly, this is the software development flow. So if you want to, if you want to do your uh, project, uh, if you want to buy the hardware, uh, you can, all you need is, all you need is a uh, computer, which you already have. Then you need a debugger. You need a debugger and you need a development board. Okay, so if you want to, if you want to do some work, if you're interested, uh, uh, here is, if you go to Shopee, right? If you go to Shopee, uh, you can buy this. It's very cheap. It's about six to seven ringgit. Okay, ST-Link. If you see ST, ST-Link uh, V2. Uh, ST-Link V2, no, China is cheaper. Price low to high. Okay, so uh, it's about six ringgit, 30 cents, the debugger. So this debugger, this debugger, one side connects to your PC. The, the other side is uh, wires uh, that will connect, wires that will connect to the board. So the board that I recommend that you buy if you want to test is this STM32F103C8. Uh. This board, uh, very cheap one. Uh, so this board is uh, STM32F103C8. Okay, this board is very popular. Uh, it's going to be 2103 Okay. Uh, what's the cheapest price? Price low to high. Oh, the price went up a bit. Okay. Cheapest one is here. Uh, 11 ringgit. Okay, you can buy this bot. So, uh, you take the ST-Link V2, you connect it to this guy, okay, and then you can start to do all your tests. You can do your test circuits. Uh, you can do your test circuits uh, on the breakboard. Uh, so you've got all the headers. This is the mouse controller. This is the crystal. Uh, you got one LED and one button. No other peripheral. So you have to buy the peripherals yourself uh, if you want to do any small projects. Okay. All right. Now, so we have... Uh, done a quick review of the this lecture materials. Now let's take a look at quiz one. Okay, let's take a look at quiz one. All right, everything has, everyone has submitted, so full attendance uh, to quiz one. All right. Now, first question, uh, which of the following kill MDK components uh, do you first encounter when you develop an application? What do you think? Uh, any ideas? Anyone? Which is it the source code editor, project manager, device database, or startup file? Which is the first project manager? Yes, correct. Because the first thing that you have to do is you have to launch create uh, launch a project wizard to create a project. Then the project manager, uh, this is where you you put in the name of the project. Uh, you know, you have to put the name of the project and then specify where you want to save it in your computer, right? So that's the project manager. The okay, next one, uh, why should why should diagnostic features be included when you develop microcontroller program? Uh, why why do we need diagnostic features? Diagnostic features, blinking light on your router. Yes, uh, improve visibility of faults. Okay, so that uh, the service time is minimized. Now, detecting signs of abnormal operation is correct, but Development costs uh, will rise, not reduce, so this is wrong. Reduce memory requirement is wrong because when you add in diagnostic features, uh, you actually use more memory, so this is wrong. Uh, 
Uh, optimizing use of peripheral to reduce pop processor utilization. This one not relevant. Okay, right. Next one. Which of the following program code is not in the startup code? Startup code. Just now you saw the startup code. Huh? You saw the startup code. Huh? So inside the startup code, you have a vector table, reset handler, stack configuration. Clock configuration huh, is not in startup code. Clock configuration is in the system underscore system uh, device. The system underscore device dot C. It's inside the system form. You remember just now, when you choose a new project, you choose the target device, huh? then some files are automatically added, right? So the startup file is automatically added for vector table, reset handler, and stack. Right? The system file is automatically added. This one is for clock, clock configuration. You configure your clock. Okay. Right. Next one. Uh, CMCs, huh? CMCs, CMCs is uh, Cortex, ARM Cortex, uh, Cortex Microcontroller uh, Software Interface uh, Standard. Now, this is because uh, nowadays you have uh, hundreds of manufacturers, hundreds of manufacturers making Cortex microcontrollers. Okay. Uh, Freescale, Texas Instruments, ST Microelectronic, even microchip, uh, PIC microcontrollers have also got used uh, Cortex M processor inside. The 32 bit PIC microcontrollers are uh, they use Cortex processor. On. So this is very, very widely used. So widely used that all these manufacturers they come together to form a consortium, right, where they standardize the way you write software. So that uh, when you write software for a uh, Texas Instrument microcontroller, and then you write software for a uh, uh, microchips microcontroller. The feel uh, is the same because everyone uses the same standard. Okay, so you got a, a lot of different components. Uh, CMC's core uh, is to standardize the way you access peripherals in the processor. Now you got peripherals in the processor and outside the processor. Okay, uh, so the peripherals inside the processor you got some library functions to access. Those library functions are, are defined in this CMC's core. CMC's SVD is for, uh, this for documentation. CMC's driver is for peripherals outside the processor. Okay? Peripherals uh, outside the processor are microcontroller peripherals. Huh? You know, in your mouse controller, you got the processor and then you got a lot of mouse controller peripherals, right? So those are all peripherals outside the processor. You use CMC's driver. CMC's DAP is for debugging, debug access port. This to standardize debugging. Okay. So debugging, uh, we will talk about it in detail in week 12. Right. Week 12 or later. We will talk about CMC's DAP uh, in detail. Okay. Which of the following utility is used last to build a project? Last. Used last. Uh, it will be linker. Okay. Because uh, uh, when you when you build a project, first you run the compiler, then the assembler, then the linker, then the build project, the build process is completed. Image converter is another another uh, process. It's not part of the build process. Okay, that's why image conversion is post building. It's after the build, not part of the build. So the last use to build is linker. Okay, uh, almost done. Uh, which of the following improvements to the hot plate provides the best best value? The best value would be a, a high frequency on off switching of the heating element. This is accurate control of temperature. Flashing indicator is nice, but not essential. Automatically turning off is for safety, not essential. Being able to see the current temperature and the set temperature also not important, uh, it's useful but not important. The most important uh, is accurately controlling the temperature, which is high frequency on off switching of the heating. Uh, this is PWM. Uh, this is the most uh, best value. Best value. All right, next one. Which of the following application imposes the least requirements on choice of microcontroller? Least requirements. Sequencing? Sequencing. Uh, least requirements, right? Signal conditioning and processing, you need a floating point unit. Communication and networking, 
depends on which one you need. You have to choose a suitable mouse controller. Closed loop control, uh, you need the mouse controller to support hardware, multiply, and divide. All, right. all of these got requirements. Uh, so the least requirements uh, is sequencing. Sequencing, least requirements. Least. Okay. okay, next one. I think this is the last one. Uh, which one is not optional? Not optional. Interrupt controller. Okay. This WIC, MTB, MPU, all these are optional to add on to the processor feature. But not optional means must have uh, is interrupt controller. Nested, vectored, uh, interrupt controller. A microcontroller is uh, useless uh, without uh, interrupts. Nested, vectored, interrupt controller. And VIC. Uh. Without interrupts, uh, microcontrollers are useless. Okay? We, they don't serve any purpose because microcontrollers are the detect changes in the environment. Without interrupts, uh, you have to keep checking whether there are changes or not. Extremely power inefficient. Processor cannot do anything else. So normally when we detect changes in the environment, we will assign interrupts. So when something happens, then an interrupt signal will go to the processor and the processor will respond accordingly. So all our stuff uh, are based on interrupts. Okay? It's the most important part of our controller. So not totally not optional as that should. Okay. Right, so uh, that's all for today. That's all for today. Um, uh, and I will see group two for your tutorial on Friday. Okay. So uh, do you have any questions before we end the class here? Everyone okay? No questions? All right, so uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, that's all for today. Oh, uh, Tio Leong Ho, uh, wait, hold on, uh, Tio Leong Ho. Uh, ah, okay. All right, so Leong Ho, I've taken your attendance up. Uh, now, uh, please make sure I take your attendance. Uh, I, I usually take it at the start of the class. So if you come in a bit late, you just let me know and I'll take it. Okay, All right, no problem.